Hello everyone! Welcome to the Eve Noob channel. This is the uh, first video in a series of a couple of videos where we're going to be looking at a new character in Alpha. Um, we're going to start off and create an account, create a, uh, create a character, um, to just look at the new player experience and also to provide a couple of tips and tricks uh, to how to make some quick isk when you're starting the game. Um, if you have not played EVE Online before, I um, highly recommend you go out and download it. It is a free-to-play game at the moment. There is a pay-to-play aspect, but also if you get good enough or have the skills or the time, then you can, of course, go into the, uh, uh, the mode of in-game currency to get you up and running. Uh, as you can see, we're creating a brand new character here. Um, I don't really care what they look like. Uh, just going to randomize and take a portrait and get straight into it. Um, let's just call it Eve Noob um, because that is the channel name. While we're there, like, subscribe and comment. You know, all that nice stuff. Um, we're going to create the character and we're going to jump straight into it. EVE is a sandbox MMORPG. It is basically one of the most complicated MMORPGs I have played to date. Um, basically, you it is true sandbox. You can do whatever you want. Um, and there's a lot of varying aspects to how to play the game. You can be an adventurer, you can run missions and kill NPCs, you can PvP, you can just float in your station and spin the ship. Um, there's a whole bunch of things you can do. But it's certainly one of the more um, in-depth space games I've played. And nothing has really compared to it. Now, because I'm playing on a client that I've pre-configured, my overview is kind of set up to the way I like it. Um, one of the main things a new character would probably want to do is essentially, after you've done the tutorial, which is what I'm about to do, um, to look at how to set up your overview and to understand how the overview works, all the different menus um, that you see on the front page. This is highly crucial to the gameplay and the experience that you're going to have on EVE. Um, I could probably play this game without even using um, any of the, uh, any of the uh, <laughs> graphics just by looking at the overview. But it is very important to understand that, to understand what all the different menus do what all the different icons look like because it's going to change your game experience quite a lot. Um, you'll notice on my particular overview, you know, there's names, types, distance, and the icons, and I sort by distance. This is a pure preference thing. You can do whatever you want. Now, if you are new to EVE, um, you basically start in a tutorial mode, um, and that little guy, a little blue box up the top left, Aura, is your tutorial sort of um, tutor. Um, read all the menus. There's a bit of reading in this game. Make sure you read and understand what's going on. It's going to give you quite a bit of insight into how to play the game. The tutorial is great. Uh, and even if you are a returning player, do it. Because it does give you ISK. It's fairly straightforward and simple. And let's be honest, it's going to be the only time that you can actually uh, play this game with a... Uh, I think these are called... I can't remember what they're called, the, the level one ships that you get for free. Um, you know, it's going to be the only time you're going to be able to kill a cruiser with one of those with like a civilian gun. So it's pretty cool. And you can check out the graphics and see things like explosions and whatnot. Um, so the tutorial is definitely something you should do. After you've done the tutorial, there is this particular chain of entry level missions. Um, you can find this through the agency menu. Um, the agency menu, there's a couple of ways to get to it. Alt M, or you can just click this icon on the left. Um, this is going to be where all your missions are in the future. So one way of making ISK for a new player and understanding all of the different mechanics is to go through this menu and to find missions that are suited for you. Now, what, from what I've heard, there's going to be a major overhaul to this menu. Um, coming up in the next patch. So this may not be as relevant in terms of how the menu looks, but it's certainly a great place to go for a new player um, to tell you what to do and how to do it. You'll notice on the left, um, the active mission is actually going to be displayed um, in your main menu. Um, so 
Uh, whenever you accept a mission, what you need to do will be there on the left as part of your menu, um, and it will tell you what to do. Now, another way to do this is to right click anywhere in space, um, and you will see what that active mission is if there is a warp to um, location. So these are created as instances in space. Um, so essentially, you know, if you are in the system um, where you are running that particular mission, your right click menu will actually have that mission. It will have that instance to warp to. Um, so you could basically right click, hover over it and warp to the location. Or you can just use the menu on the left, which is pretty straightforward as well. Very, very handy um, for, I guess, mission runners to have all of these little things around. Now, here we are, we've started the first one in the chain of the tutorial missions. Now, the tutorial missions are great. They give you bounties. Um, so you can see here, these ones on the top, you can see there is a bounty on each of these NPCs. They're cruisers. Each one, once we kill them, will be 10,000 isk. So straight away, as a new player, that's 30,000 isk. You do start, you start with 5,000 isk. So you've pretty much quadrupled your, um, your starting bank uh, just by, well, more than quadrupled, apologies, uh, just by killing these NPCs. Very, very good to do. Now, the, the, the other benefit of doing the starting chain um, is to ensure that you've basically um, learnt all of the different career paths in EVE. Um, there's a whole bunch of things you can do in this game, and the, the starting missions, the chain, will actually go through most of them. It will explain things like how to orbit, how to fly in space, you know, how to lock targets, how to shoot, um, you know, all the all the cool and nifty things that you would like to learn about the game. Um, there is a couple of things though that don't really get um, explained, um, and it's particularly and this is this is the one that is kind of the hardest is you know overviews um, that doesn't really get explained in the uh, starting missions. Um, setting up your cameras, setting up your overlays. Uh, so you'll notice that um, I'm flying around and there's uh, there's big rings around my ship. Um, you know, that, that doesn't really get explained. It's, it's a tactical overlay. Um, so essentially, ooh, someone's trying to coerce me as a new player. Let's, yeah, no, I can't read that. We'll just close that up. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's certainly a good thing thing to watch other YouTube videos as well and I'll probably do a series on um, you know how I've set up my overlay and the, some of the things I've done there. Now one thing that's optional is you can loot these um, these wrecks in these starting chains. They're only going to give you metal scraps which is not worth much but look anything counts right you can if you wanted to basically um, pick up some things here and there you can. Now, you'll notice I've finished my starting chain and it's basically said no skills in queue. If you're a returning player to EVE, you really probably should know what skills are. Um, but as a new player, skills are essentially not grinded in this game. They just come to you passively over time. One of the benefits of being Omega is you have no cap on your skill points and you can skill things up to max levels. Um, in Alpha, there's certain things that uh, you can't skill up. What I'm doing right now is I'm opening up the fitting window. Um, probably watch a YouTube video on fitting if you don't know what the fitting window is. Um, but it's certainly somewhere where you can simulate your fits um, and create ships that you'd like to fly. The reason why I'm doing this right now is because I would like to, um, eventually, to make money, I, would, I need to get standings up for missions. Uh, one of the best ways to get standings up is to do something called distribution missions. Distribution missions are take this uh, take this uh, frigate or take this sorry take this cargo from point A to point B. So essentially, if you think about a space trucker, um, that's what a distribution mission is. What I'm fitting up right here is a magnet. The magnet is a Tech One frigate. It's usually used for exploration. Um, and basically, it's one of the best ships for cargo, believe it or not. You can fit up to, I think it's up to about 16 or 1800 cargo on a magnet. Um, and it, the reason for that is because the base cargo is so high. So, for a Tech One frigate to run distribution missions and to get as many things as possible into the cargo, 
what we do is just load this up with cargo expansions. Um, and it shouldn't be too expensive. I remember it being about like a mil or two mil. Um, so here we are. I'm setting this up. The reason why I'm uh, doing this right now is to see if there's any skills that I need to um, train up to get this ship. So let's just save the... Fi oh, hang on. It's not that cheap. 5.1 mil. Um, uh, let me just have a quick look. Uh, yeah, okay. That's probably why. I will swap that around to just a normal micro warp drive. That's better. One mil. So one mil rough. I actually look at this. We'll just, you know, save it up as a cheap tech one hauler. Um, and I think I'll need the frigate skill book. So put my mouse over here. Yeah, I'll need to get that skill book. So I'll need money for that. Uh, we'll eventually go and find out. I don't think I have that skill book yet. I might potentially get it from doing some of these chain missions. So, you know, that's the first fit that I want to set up. Um, so we, we're aiming to go for that, sh that ship. Um, so we'll, we know we need about a mil, plus we need the money for the skill book. Once we have that, we can probably run, because we've got like 1,200 cargo, we could probably run three or four distribution missions at once. Um, the next ship that I want to fit up is probably a venture um, to do potentially some mining missions. Once again, these are primarily for um, uh, for standings boosts because we want to get to a stage where we are passively grinding skills and we're eventually going to be able to do level 3 missions, which is where the money's at. Um, so I just set up the fit for now. I'm not going to buy it or anything, but I just need to know what skills I need to fly it the way I want to fly it. I always shield tank ventures, um, I just find it easier, um, so generally shield extenders, um, you can put a damage, con uh, damage control in the lower slot, I tend to just go for a mining boost because it's high sec and it's not going to be too much of an issue, um, and then just the uh, shield rigs um, in the uh, mids. Now ventures are very very versatile ships. They've got um, warp core stab stabilization um, on by default. Like basically, I think you get two points of warp core stabilization by default, which means that you know, you'd know you need to be pinned down pretty hard to be in a sticky situation. Um, you find these ships being used for multiple things, like in Faction Warfare, for example, they were predominantly used for farming um, nodes. Um, I think there's been an update recently that's kind of given um, a bit more of an advantage to PVPers in that respect. Uh, but uh, having a look at this, you know, I basically need shield upgrades and mining upgrades. I think I've got the um, the shield upgrades um, already. Like, I, I just need to train it up. So let's have a look. Yeah, just one more point on that. Mining upgrades, I'll need to buy the skill book or just queue it up a bit later. So first thing I'm going to queue up is shield upgrades. And that's because shields are very important in this game. I will need shield upgrades anyway, um, so it's a great one, um, and just make sure you save your fit. Obviously, I could put drones in this as well, but I'm just going to say cheap venture, save. It's about 5 mil, it's not too expensive. We'll get a free venture later anyway. Alright, so let's continue on. I'm going to continue grinding these missions. Um, essentially, once you finish all of these missions, um, you see here, down here we activate it. You've also got the... Um, um, what it provides, the the, uh, the rewards down the bottom as well. But once you do finish these missions, I believe you get quite a few skill points, which is great because it will boost your Q um, in terms of those skills that you're training. So it's very important to make sure that you train the skills that you want. Um, so ensure that you've got a bit of a plan um, on what you want to do. My plan right now is to make as much ISK as possible. Now we have undocked, we are going to go do a couple of more training missions. Um, so one thing I want to say, and I've been doing this on and off, is because I've been playing EVE for some time, um, when I am doing uh, missions where it's a bit passive or, I, or I activities that are a bit passive like mining, um, one way to make a bit of extra ISK is to do project discovery. Project Discovery is like a mapping project. It's like a mass sort of crowd crowdsourced mapping project where you go in and you're going to map trends around graphs. Now, this might sound boring, but some people find it fun. 
And let's be honest, like if you're mining and you're AFK or you're just, you know, watching a video or a movie um, and literally all you're waiting for is a mining node to deplete, doing this is going to net you some extra isk. It's going to net you crates, which give you skins, which also gives you extra isk or just cool skins for your ships to fly. Um, and that will basically give you some more passive income. As you can see here, I've analyzed a uh, thing successfully. Now, if you don't know how to do this, there's a tutorial, run the tutorial. If you still don't know, plenty of YouTube videos. But that one gave me 26,000 isk on top of, you know, my, um, whatever I'm doing in the background there. As you can see, I'm killing like a NPC passively because it's a tutorial, right? So it's, it's a good way to basically get as much income as possible. Um, when you're first starting up. Now, obviously, later on in the game, there's plenty of other things you can do that's going to give you a lot more isk. But as a new character, or someone putting, giving themselves a challenge to play on an alpha and see how far they can take it, this is a great way to just give you a bit more of a bit more extra income. It's also a different part of the game. A lot of people don't know this part of the game or don't bother with it. Um, it's going to give you some skins. And on that note, that will conclude episode one. So what we've talked about, obviously do your tutorials, do your entry missions. That's going to give you plenty of risk to start with. It's going to give you ships. It's going to give you skill books. Um, and secondary to that, you know, there's some passive things to do in the background, like project discovery. Make sure you know you've got a bit of a plan um, in terms of what you're going to be doing. Uh, and until next time, hit that subscribe, like button for episode two. Thanks guys.